I've been wanting to do a video for a while taking a look at bird language. One of the tricky things about bird language is that the key things that we need to observe if we want to really understand birds, they happen very fast, but there's also a lot of subtlety to them. And so it's, it's hard to, to capture it sometimes on video. Um, and uh, really the, the times that are easiest to really go deep into bird language are when there's some sort of rhythm that's happening over a period of time where we can really we can really study something and take a closer look at it because it's just so easy when you see a bird doing anything at all you know whether it's just perched or whether it's feeding on the ground it's so easy to just walk by and to think you know okay there there was a bird there and that's about it but if we really want to understand deeper um, we need to find ways of, of sinking our observation teeth in. And, you know, I, I talked about that in a previous video when we were listening to the oven birds out in the forest. And we, we did this with the song of the oven bird. And, you know, just how a repeating element in the life of the bird happening over and over again provides a rich opportunity to dig deeper and and find the rhythm that that bird is displaying and so um, here we have a visual example uh, you know I'm at this this beautiful marshland here and uh, I thought this would be a good place to, to come because I've been I've been wanting to show you to really dig into some of the more visual body language aspects of bird language but it's just it's so hard to to capture birds a lot of times on video where I can really talk about it and and give you the kind of depth that we really need to have in order to do bird language properly and so um, what, what we're seeing here you know ducks are, are a, a fantastic way to start tuning your eyes to the body language of birds and sort of this this visual bird language there's a little flock of ducks right here and uh, even here, I, I honestly don't know how well this is going to show on my camera. I only have a very small view, so um, I can see them well just looking at them here, but um, I have no idea if this will come through. But we've been watching for, you know, a few minutes now, and um, one of the key things that I, I shared in that previous video when we were talking about song rhythms is that you really you need to have a longer period of time to really study the birds in order to find the rhythm. It's not really something that you can establish in a, a very short period of time. And so um, what we can, however, in this short period of time that we've been watching these birds, it's been a few minutes, and we can see that we can make some observations now. You know, there's, there's sort of, we can, we can observe that there's a good number of them and they're all kind of clumped in in a pretty a pretty tight space this is another thing that starts to happen when when you do just sink into a sit spot and uh and start watching what's happening around you as you settle in the birds start to come in closer so we just had a bird come right through it's in it's in these bushes right now and um, but we can notice that these ducks down here are in a feeding pattern. You know, they're they're tightly clumped. They're sort of dabbling down, sticking their heads under, and then coming back up. And we can just observe this. You know, this is what they do when they're feeling fairly comfortable. Uh, here we go. We got some other birds coming in. So. Um, this is what happens it starts to evolve so a bunch of birds just flew into this uh this corner here i don't i don't even know exactly what they are but um the story is evolving and we can just be aware of how the birds are moving around moving through most of the time when you're observing this stuff it's just birds doing what they feel comfortable and happy doing you know they're sort of in a relaxed position gathering food, preening, 
you know, doing all the things that they need to maintain their lives. And all we have to do if we want to understand bird language is sit with it and see how long it goes for and look for the moment when it changes. You know, if you were to sit here for long enough and just keep watching these birds, eventually they're going to do something different. And when they change their pattern, that's when the real insights are going to start to emerge. And so one thing we can already kind of observe with this, uh, this group of ducks is that even though they were, they were clumped together, they've sort of spread apart a little bit into more of a line. It's not a big change. Um, they're still doing the same behavior. Their, their uh, you know, overall energy is, is pretty much the same. But it's a, it's a little bit of a change. There's a little bit more movement in the group. And at this point, I'm not even trying to make sense of it or say that it means anything or um, try to derive any kind of particular understanding from it. I'm just observing and I'm just enjoying the sunshine and the, the beauty of this place. The sun is still pretty low in the sky and so it just makes the colors really pop out on everything. And um, I don't know if this is showing on the camera, but there's, there's little insects down in the water that are uh, occasionally making little, little ripples when they pop up, little concentric rings bubbling out from the center. You know, we're just tuning into an observation and noticing that there's, there's a particular pace to how these ducks are, are feeding. You know, there's the shape of their, and the size of their little clump there. But then there's also, uh, there's a pace to how they stick their heads down. They grab something and they pull it back up. They have a moment of awareness of their surroundings. And then when they realize, okay, I'm safe, they put their heads back in. And so we just want to observe it. The thing that has always really inspired me about bird language is that it's a wildlife tracking skill. And, um, you know, if we were to see, say, like a mink or, um, you know, like an, an eagle or a hawk came in looking for uh, a duck snack or something, we would see changes in their behavior. And even if we didn't directly see the mink or the otter or, you know, whatever danger is, is potentially... Um, lurking around, we could still see the changes in the body language of the ducks. And we could use that to understand what they're thinking, you know, what they're perceiving. Because as humans, especially modern humans, where we live, you know, just this such a fast paced life, we're never going to have as much awareness as the ducks have. They're, they're just, they're always going to have and all wild birds, you know, they're just always going to have more um, awareness and knowledge of the local place than what we have. And so we can sort of piggyback on their awareness in order to expand our own and, and start to see the movement of predators and other animals through the movements of the prey animals like ducks and songbirds and uh, things like that. This is what inspired me, you know, I, I, I really, I wanted to be able to use bird alarms to find animals. And um, if you go to like traditional nature-based cultures that have a strong tradition of tracking and understanding the natural world, this is one of the key skills that they use to stay alert for things like lions and um, snakes that like really dangerous snakes um, and you know just things that you really you kind of need to be aware if you're out in like the African bush somewhere um, you need to be able to know when there's a lion there before it gets within 10 feet of you and um, bird language is really the the best way to do that it can give you the most instantaneous and up-to-date information and so when I first started going out you know that's that's really what motivated me to do this I was like this is amazing if I can just learn to understand what the birds are saying then I can use that information to understand things about my surroundings and um, to 
actually locate animals and get closer to wildlife and also learn what is my impact on the environment so I can, I can learn to cause less of an impact. But one of the things that I've learned over time as I've been developing this skill and um, practicing and learning how it applies to everything, I've used this with everything from owls to raccoons to house cats, bobcats, mountain lions, um, possums, uh, just, you know, all kinds of hawks and um, falcons and things. It just, the list goes on and on and on. It's, uh, the, the deeper you go into bird language, the more you realize it's, it's always happening. And uh, one of the key things that I've, I've really learned and has, has made the biggest difference for me is that most of the time when you're observing birds and trying to get a sense of what they're saying, most of the time it really is just sitting and enjoying the moment and there's really not that much going on. Bird language happens in these long periods of nothing's happening, punctuated by moments when, you know, a hawk flies through and creates this, this ripple. And um, if you're not really paying close attention when that happens in that moment, if your awareness drops, you're gonna miss it. And this is one of the big reasons why bird language is not more common in the modern world, because it does take a, a pretty good quality of attention and observation and awareness. And um, that's really, you know, that's what we're seeing with these ducks. One thing we can observe, though, is that um, as we've been talking here, um, several of the members of the main clump slowly kind of made their way over to the edge of the grass. And um, they sort of moved out of a, uh, moved out of their feeding pattern and more into uh, a resting pattern. And one thing that I find really interesting about this is that they are on the west side of the pond. And so it's pretty early in the morning. I think it must be around like eight o'clock in the morning now. And um, it's, a, it's a full sunny day, beautiful blue sky. Yesterday was gray and wet and a little bit cold for this time of year. And the wind is coming from the south. And so right in that, that little spot there up against the grasses, it just, it's the perfect little sheltered space to catch the sun, protect from the wind. Um, you have the visual barrier behind you for any sort of um, dangers that might be coming from that side and you can just sort of look out into the open it's a really good spot for a duck and you know all these all these things about like the position that they sit in the direction that they face we're getting a little bit of a sequence i mean we've been watching for quite a while and mostly they've just been doing one thing this whole time and it hasn't really evolved into a sequence of behavior yet but all of these little subtle things make a difference in terms of how we understand bird language and how we can make sense of what the birds are communicating. Really, what, what we're really doing with bird language is learning to sense what the birds are feeling because bird language is different from a human language in that it's less conscious it's less intentional in terms of they don't really think about what they want to say and then form it into words put it into a sentence and then communicate it it's really more like the communication just comes out of them by virtue of what they're feeling and when they're feeling relaxed and comfortable and not pressured by any sort of danger um, they're going to do maintenance behaviors like feeding, preening, nesting, courtship, all that kind of stuff. We can use those behaviors to identify what the birds are communicating, but it's just happening as a result of how they feel. So I think what I'm going to do, because this, this could go on for a long time, 
I'm going to pause for a, a little while and let this sequence unfold and um, we'll see what happens. So a few minutes went by as I was watching these ducks and a group of red-winged blackbirds flew in here and uh, you might be able to see them a little bit. There's at least two or three of them down there. And if you listen, they're making a lot of calls. There's even one, oh, he's flying in right now. There, you see that? When you hear this sort of thing, it definitely piques my interest. I've been listening to them. They, f they flew in there maybe two minutes ago. They've been calling repetitively for a couple minutes. Oh, and now the ducks are moving. The ducks are going over. Oh. So here we're seeing the next step in the sequence here. I'm going to have to go back and look on the recording. I I thought I saw something there. But I was I was a little bit distracted by the ducks when they were coming through. This is what I mean. Like there were a number of things that happened there all at the same time. And it gets to this place where, you know, we spent like 20 minutes watching those ducks and nothing happened. And then in the space of like three or four minutes, a whole series of events happened. Stand up here, see if we can get the view a little bit better. That a number of things changed when those, um, when those red winged blackbirds came in and they, uh, they were calling and then the ducks moved over as the ducks hit about this point the red winged blackbirds actually stopped they uh they changed their pattern there and at this point we can see that the ducks are much more spread out there's still some rustling in the grass there something on land is that a raccoon that is a raccoon Yes, so, okay, perfect. I'm so glad we just caught some, we just caught some live bird language. So those red-winged blackbirds flew in and started making all that noise. And um, the ducks started coming through. They moved this way to check out what was happening. As they did, I think you'll be able to see it on the video because that's, that's what I thought I was seeing there. I saw something on the land and I couldn't quite figure out what it is. Man, that, that ra raccoon is just moving along the edge there. So. Let me see if I can uh, zoom this in. him stepping on a stick. It's interesting how um, the ducks are, are quite comfortable being very close to the raccoon when the raccoon is, is on land. They have a lot of safety and they didn't, they didn't alarm vocally, but they did, they were absolutely responding to the red winged blackbirds and they probably knew there was a raccoon there and uh, they just wanted to, to change their position to get a view of it. But this is how bird language works. You know, you, you sit there for a long period of time and nothing happens. The birds are just feeding and then something changes. The red-winged blackbirds come in, they start making a whole bunch of noise. Um, and, the, and the key with this one, the thing that really caught my ear with that one is that there was multiple birds involved. There was at least two or three red-winged blackbirds out on this grassy spot here and they were oh see this one's coming in he's uh 
he's looking at the raccoon too. Um, and uh, they were they were all calling at the same time. There's a particular quality of calling that they were making that now the ducks are going over to check it out again. Um, there's a particular quality of calling that they make when they're doing an alarm sequence that they all kind of it's almost like they're all talking over each other. I call it parabolic syncopation because um, John Young, the guy who I learned a lot of my bird language stuff from, he talks about the parabolic alarm as being, you know, basically the birds, they all, they all crowd around the top of the raccoon and they look down, they'll do it for cats, they'll do it for owls they look down and they sort of move around a little bit and they call and they all talk over each other. When birds do that, a parabolic alarm, the rhythm is syncopated when there's multiple birds calling. And so you can see that's where the raccoon is right now, where that red winged blackbird is calling and the ducks are coming out. They're, they're, get, they're just switching their position. They're like, they're just watching the raccoon as it moves along the edge of this grass. And, you know, very few times in this whole sequence have we actually seen the raccoon. You know, he sort of poked his head out a couple times. But we can still, we can see the raccoon through these birds. And we can see how it's moving along the edge. Every once in a while that, that blackbird just pops up and then pops back down. The raccoon is, is basically below him. Uh, he might be like 10 feet out to the left or 10 feet out to the right, but it's generally around the spot of that red winged blackbird is where the, uh, the raccoon is right now. And so we, we, when we can read bird language, we can follow the movement of that animal and know where it is without being able to directly see it. It's an indirect way of seeing what's happening in the invisible layer of nature, you know, in the middle of the two meter high grass, a raccoon is moving and we can see it through the eyes of the birds and through the sounds that the birds make. So it's cool that the, uh, the ducks have moved back to that original spot. I'm so excited that you got to see that. I had no idea what we would find today coming out here and I really hope that it uh, showed up well on the video because bird language is one of those things that is just if unless you see it for yourself and you experience like that that long period of waiting and you're like I don't know if this is is there really anything going to happen here you know <laughs> like it just seems like I'm just looking at ducks do nothing and some grass when you see how it evolves you know and, and we had to sit here for half an hour in order to see this you know if, if I had just if I had left after that 20 minutes I would never have seen that raccoon I would have never known that there was you know a story playing out there and so this is this is why bird language is is sometimes difficult to grasp it's got a lot of subtlety to it that um, takes patience and practice and persistence and listening and alertness and focus. You really have to be on your awareness game and paying attention in order to, in order to catch that. So this is probably gonna be quite a long video, but um, I think that's, that's so awesome that we just saw a raccoon there. So I hope you found this inspiring and, uh, you know, just to help you realize that I'm in a public city park right now. You know, this is the uh, Miner's Marsh in Kentville, Nova Scotia. And uh, there's people walking their dogs along the trail, just like right next to the bench that I'm sitting on. I'm just sitting on a bench on a trail. And there are, there are stories like that raccoon and bird language events happening all around this park right now and all you have to do is get out there grab a sit spot open your eyes open your ears make some observations look for the rhythm look for that sequence of events that's happening with the birds in your landscape 
what are they doing? Find that pattern and look for the moment when it changes. Because that moment when it changes, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. It's all going to happen kind of at the same time. You know, that all the, the real action of that bird language sequence was about three or four minutes in the space of, of half an hour. And it was a little overwhelming. I even, you know, as I'm like trying to film this and I'm watching the blackbirds and I'm trying to explain it and the, the ducks are going by, I almost didn't even see the raccoon there when it came out of the, the grass. I had to wait, I had to see it the second time it came out was really when I spotted it. And it's so important to realize that this is what it takes to learn bird language. And um, so I hope that makes sense and I hope you find that interesting. I'm definitely feeling um, a, a jolt of aliveness from having that encounter with a wild animal and um, there's just there's some extra layer of energy that happens when when you hear the bird language that happens before it and then you get to see it afterwards and you can watch the whole sequence evolve. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.